possession the team has if it's not creating chances. Y'all had 71% of the possession tonight, but only two chances created according to the MLS stats. Was it more what Philadelphia was doing or what y'all weren't doing tonight? Uh, now, in the beginning, we, I think we, uh, we were finding some problems, you know, to really find our uh, free man. And, uh, because I think uh, Philly was very good organized, we couldn't have get our man in the midfield free. So the first 30 minutes, uh, yeah, wasn't uh, yeah, the type of play that we wanted to see. After that, I think uh, when we went to 4-4-2, we were getting more in, into the game. And directly, I think uh, after we did that, I think uh, Joseph uh, Martinez, you know, had a big chance to uh, when he uh, hit the crossbar, and so. Yeah, well, it was a little bit finding the, the spaces where uh, where we could, and of course, you know, they let us. You know, the last uh, three centre backs had the ball, and yeah, then you don't uh, create nothing. And, uh, so I think after those uh, 30 minutes, uh, yeah, we, we're getting better in the game, and and we also created uh, more chances or, or threats. You know, uh, doesn't have to always admit that you know you have to have a 100% chance. To, uh, but also for me, you know, opportunities to get an 100% chance is for me also a chance. And uh, we did it much better the second half. So I think we were a little bit unfortunately that we conceded like, yeah, that sloppy goal against us because, uh, yeah, I have really the feeling that, you know, they were getting tired, uh, more tired and more tired than us. And, and I already said to my team, you know, after this game, so. You know, I have to give you a compliment that you still, you know, uh, straightened your back and uh, try to, to push forward because they didn't play uh, those four extra games, you know, uh, during this uh, period. And so every three or four days we have had a game and, you know, and then you see that we're just missing that little bit freshness, you know, to make a difference. To, to get that pass to the right man or at the right speed and everything or that first control uh, so we made we make still too many errors when it's not necessary in, in my point of view and and i think that's the, uh, the reason i think mostly is you know because yeah the freshness that we're missing right now so hopefully after this uh, interland uh, international period we can uh, see a fresh uh, United, of course, some one of the, our major players going to play uh, abroad, but still, I think uh, we're going to see a fresh uh, Atlanta United and with better choices uh, on the ball. And, uh, so, 1-1 uh, is a very disappointed result for everybody who loves uh, Atlanta United, but still they can also be proud, you know, for the team who you know, straight in the back, uh, also when they were 1-0 down and tried to afford uh, at the end, you know, the, the winning goal. And again, it's not uh, easy when you play that much games and you're tired, you know, the, the players are really, really tired right now. So uh, they deserve uh, the two days off. Eric and Felipe, Eric, on the right. Uh, despite seeing, uh, despite the players being tired, are you seeing progress and, and is Pitty in a bad run of form right now or is he still getting used to his new, his, of his course, you know, he has, to, he has to get you, and he knows also that it wasn't his best game, everybody can see that, and he know and he can play much and much better, and he has to play much better, but, you know, it's also, you know, he has to adapt and everything, a new culture, uh, new circumstances, uh, the turf, you know, is also something he, uh, he never played almost, and, uh, you know, in Argentina, they always play on grass, so, all those aspects, you know, uh, make it uh, quite difficult, you know, to uh, to start normally as, as well uh, if you want, you know. But uh, we know everybody is a fantastic quality player and a fantastic person, so uh, we have to have patience with him. Coach, um, you said that you wanted um, Nagby and Remedy to get more touches. Yeah. Um, when that breaks down, like tonight, who, who needs to step up and? To and really create chances in the midfield, be that kind of like number ten, the, the midfield creator, um, in the absence of two central midfielders that are meant to do that. Yeah, that's why we, we changed a little bit the system after thirty minutes to get 
Uh, PT uh, Gonzalo uh, Martinez more on, on the ball and around uh, Joseph and so that you want uh, with those uh, and normally Eric and uh, and Jonathan are the players you know especially in the midfield who can uh, handle you know the ball with uh, when they are under pressure you know especially Jonathan is one of the best I think in in this MLS you know so. Uh, that you want uh, from those guys to, you know, to, with one turn or one control that they outplay some players. And uh, sometimes you saw that, but we have to do that uh, more. But uh, again, teams are very good organized and they want you to, you know, to, to fall in the trap, you know, to play in the middle. You saw, uh, I think, the last 10 minutes we played two times, we played uh, in, in, in between. You know, try to find uh, Joseph or uh, Gonzalo with a hard ball over the ground, and they are waiting for that. And two times you get a counter attack, and one was a very good save of uh, Brad. So we have to yeah, recognize when we have to play those balls, or you know, if you do it from the start, yeah, they are organized. But when you play from right to left, and then the right moment, yeah, that we have to have to, I think. Uh, do better not really the first ball in because yeah then they are organized and they are waiting for that and they show that every time they have runners and but still you know if I see how our defenders did, did it they did a great job also uh, Leo, Leandro uh, Gonzalo Pires did a fantastic job uh, uh, Miles Robinson was excellent again you know so uh, there are also very good positive things you know and uh, so. Again, I think if we are fresh, then we're going to see a difference, you know. Doug, then Sydney. Yeah, Coach, if you could um, explain what you wanted to see out of the Diamond midfield tonight. And as something else that you had said before Monterey is you didn't want to change formations unless you had about a week to work on it because you mm -hmm. thought it would be kind of a panic yeah. thing. So I was curious about the change tonight from what y'all had been using the, the previous few weeks. Yeah, because... Uh, against normally this kind of uh, system. The ideal system for me, you know, is 3-4-3. Uh, four, four, three. Because then, you know, uh, everybody on the midfield has his own man. And you have the three in the back who plays against two, and the three up front plays against four. So we have one spare man left in the back, and there's one spare man left in the, in the back. So uh, for me, it's just simple. So when we have one spare man left in, in the back, we have always found our free man, and uh, in training went very well. <laughs> but uh, you know, of course, uh, they are very good organized, and they are already playing a lot of times uh, together. So they do it better, of course, than you know the training team who uh, really don't that try to create the same. But you never, you, you always know that it's not the same. But. I, I still believe, you know, against this kind of system, when you play 3-4-3, three, three, you know, uh, you can do a lot of harm uh, against the opponent, but yeah, then you have to be not sloppy with the ball, because then it's a really dangerous uh, system. But uh, I still believed it, and uh, yeah, afterwards, because we couldn't find our free man really, uh, we changed to 4-4-2 four, 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 and uh, from that uh, moment on we had more control, we created more, not the 100% the chances that we of course uh, wanted, but uh, still, you know, uh, yeah, they had one shot, you know, uh, a really good chance or maybe one and a half chance in, in the second half, in the first 30 minutes they were always danger, there was always danger, you had the feeling, hey, we don't really get in, uh, where we want it. They always get where, around <coughs> our uh, area. So uh, again, uh, we changed it and uh, that picked it up very well. Sydney and Chris. You mentioned Miles Robinson. And, uh, this performance tonight really carries over from Wednesday. Uh, in the time that you've been with the team since January, what growth have you seen from him? Yeah, I know. Well, he's, you know, he's training and playing and, and showing this form from the start. And, uh, He's uh, an <coughs> yeah, unbelievable athlete, and uh, you know he's just uh, a normal guy who just wants to uh, to play football and work hard. And and you know when you play against uh, against this kind of opponents or, or in tournaments like the Champions League, 
uh, you see those players growing because they're playing against uh, very uh, tough opponents and for him it's, it's a great experience and uh, you know we have to treasure that, that he's now playing on this high level because he's still young and hopefully he don't fall back but uh, that's normal when you're young you know to, to still be on that level every time but until now he you know he's doing a fantastic job for the team for himself uh, for Atlanta United so uh, <coughs> hopefully he can continue and uh, right now uh, yeah I don't know where his uh, you know like the ceiling is but uh, right now he's uh, yeah, he's really fantastic Chris and Doug Frank what did you think of Tito's performance tonight and his effect on the game no, I think you know he really brings some other dimension into the team. You know, uh, especially you know some uh, some depth into into the team with his runnings and uh, also his unpredictable uh, actions uh, sometimes. And uh, I think he did well. He was also very good in in discipline. You know, to play in the midfield when he had to. And uh, so I, I already said I gave him a, a good compliment. Of course, you know we want to be more decisive uh, for the team, but still. Uh, I think he did quite well. Last one in English, Doug. Y'all are going to be missing, I, th I think, f uh, five or six, six first six, team uh, six, players six, yeah. uh, over the break. Yeah. Uh, and uh, most of those are on offense. How difficult is it going to be for you to kind of fine tune the things that you need to get yeah. done before the next game? Yeah, but that's that's always hard, you know, for every coach from a, from a team, you know, club uh, point of view. It's because you want really those two weeks, you know, to get you know your system in, or what kind of uh, things you want to discuss with your players, and then uh, you have them only three days uh, again. Uh, they're coming back probably on, on Wednesday or Thursday, and then on Sunday or on Saturday we travel to uh, Columbus. So that that's quite hard, of course. Uh, we have to accept it, but with the other, you know, uh, 16 players, we can really do something good and also, you know, get those uh, trainings, uh, exercises. I think what we still are missing, you know, those one against one, two against two, three against three, to get really that sharpness, that, that freshness uh, into the in the, to the team. So. Besides, of course, how we want to play, of course. So, but I think that the main thing is, you know, to get our freshness back, and it also starts with, you know, to play in two against two, three against three, and uh, because we couldn't uh, do that uh, in the preseason because you have five uh, weeks uh, of preseason, and then uh, yeah, the whole cyclus started with all the, those games. That's it for English.